morning, church family. It is 12 noon, Wednesday, live Facebook word of encouragement time. So I'm going to wait for a few of you to sign in, and we're going to get moving here pretty quick. So anyway, God is good. I want to encourage some of you to go back and watch the other encouraging words. Um, they're all live. Uh, Sarah has them on uh, the Facebook saved and also on the website saved. So remember that you can go uh, to workministries.com and find them and, and review them. And you will be blessed. Sister Maddie, it's good to have you. And Sarah, good to have you. And there's somebody else. We'll see who else is on here this morning. We're just giving everyone a chance to sign. There's my sister Rose. Good to see you, Rose. Oh, God is so good. Um, those of you that are on here, I, uh, I'm hoping you watched the youth service last night. We did, uh, talking about a powerful worship and praise. My goodness, it was good. It was good. So we're just waiting around, uh, rambling on for a couple of minutes, just trying to uh, give others a chance to get on line with it. There's the fourth person. So uh, whoever's out there, five, there we go. You're building a little bit. Come on, guys. Ring some bells and let them know that uh, it's time. Also, remember tonight, uh, 7 o'clock is service. We are going to be live again tonight with worship and praise and the word. Uh, and um, I had a uh, brother Alan Hickman from Resurrection called me this morning at, I don't know, around nine o'clock. Asked me if I'd be on their Living Above the Chaos live stream. So that will be, uh, if you want to go check that out. What I shared this morning was out of Psalms 18 on a live stream with him. It's about 15 minutes long. It's uh, Living Above the Chaos on the YouTube uh, uh, section with uh, Resurrection Life. So I was over there with him this morning and then uh, back here again this morning with the church family. Sage, it's good to see you. Susie Fireson, I'm doing good today. My daughter, Tina, it's good to you. Let's have you call your sister, wake her up. She probably is awake. Um, and let's get her on the on, on this thing too. We got seven of you so far. Ah, it's good to have you. We're gonna uh, share a little bit in the word this morning. Just gonna try to get everyone a high teen. I'm waving back there. <laughs> um, amen. Billy Meeks, good to have you. Brenda Willis, good morning. Good morning, everyone. God is good all the time. Oops, sorry, I kicked the camera. Um, Hope no one got a headache there. Joy, good to have you this morning. And uh, praise the Lord. God is good all the time. He is still moving. And you know, it doesn't matter what the uh, world system says. They can only go by numbers. We know what God says. And that is God speaking that we go by faith. And we'll see God move. Good morning, Savannah. Good morning, everyone. So there's 10 of us so far. We'll see who else jumps on here real quick. And I don't want to wait too long. We'll wait about another minute or so. And uh, we'll share with you what God is saying. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Tammy and I were just listening. My brother-in-law, Jim, good to have you. Tammy and I were just listening to Carrie Job and... Cody Carnes' new song called The Blessing. If you've heard it, it's a powerful song. If you haven't, you might want to listen to it. It's a They just wrote the thing. It just dove in on them. God just ministered uh, as they wrote that thing real quick. Like, good morning, Nikki. Good to have you. And she is definitely right. We are family. And we all are missing each other. Pam Clossom, good to have you this morning. And uh, just waiting a couple of more minutes. And uh, Ruth, it's good to see you today. Okay, good afternoon. 
the morning is past. You're right. Uh, leave it to Ruth to be technical on me. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. It is afternoon. Love you, Ruth. I really do. Miss seeing you. I almost came to your house and stood in your driveway and sang a song the other day, but I just sounded terrible. Lana, good to have you and uh, everyone else that's coming in. We're just waiting a couple of minutes. Savannah, yes, youth worship last night was so powerful. I'm going to share something about that to you in just a minute. Very, very strong. Um, so... Let's pray and we're going to get started. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to share your word today. And Lord, just let your presence rest over me and those that are listening, those that are going to listen. That Father, we'll all hear what you want us to hear. No matter what's said, Lord, let each of us hear what we need. Let your name be glorified. Bless each one, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Mary Gilmore, good to have you. Um, okay, so let's get started. This is kind of a free thing before I get into the word that I have. But last night, if you didn't listen to the worship uh, of the youth, and Marcus had a good word too, but the youth service, you can go to the World Outreach page and you can find Thob or just go Thob, excuse me, and you can uh, uh, go to the Thob on Facebook and watch this service. It was very, very powerful. And they broke into a prophetic, spontaneous worship thing. And Isabella and uh, the others were singing about him being the lion of the tribe of Judah, the roar of the Lord, and so many things. Very powerful. And uh, you know, we had the, the laptop on the table last night, so we just kind of listened to it and uh, we were all kind of gathered around enjoying it. So we go to bed. I woke up at 3.30 this morning. I was unable to sleep. And uh, I, I went in uh, into the uh, family room and got my laptop out. So I just wanted to study a couple things on the Passover and on this week of the Passion. And I was mistaken on something. I didn't realize this. Listen how cool this is. Last night... While the youth were singing in great power, I mean passion of the lion is roaring and, and uh, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah and all these things about victory. Uh, hey, Willen, good to, good to see you, hear you say amen, buddy. Um, anyway, do you realize this? I didn't know this. I was, it took me probably 30 minutes to figure this out this morning. I went back to bed about 4.30 once I finally got this. But do you realize the Passover in the Old Testament? Now, if you don't know what that is, if you get the picture of the movie, The Ten Commandments, and Israel was slaves for 400 years. They were in Egypt for 430 years. And God sent Moses to get them out, and it was a real battle. And he sent the ten plagues. And each plague represented one of their gods that he was destroying. And... When they finally left, God said, death is coming into the camp. But if you'll put blood, the blood of the lamb on your doorpost, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. It's called the Passover. It's the memory and they, they rejoice in, in uh, just excitement because all of them left Egypt and they left with money, they left with their possessions and it was a beautiful thing but death came in and death passed over because the blood was on the doorpost that's called the passover do you know when passover starts last night at sundown when our youth entered into worship and praise on the jewish calendar that's when the blood was applied to the doorpost at that moment Get this in your mind. If we could take 2020 and run it back thousands of years and overlay them while they're putting the blood on the doorpost, Isabella and Taylor and the others are singing, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. 
and he's roaring. Oh my goodness, I hope that excites somebody because it does me. This is the week. I thought it was the end of this week, but it began yesterday evening because their calendar, their days were evening to evening. So yesterday evening at sundown was the command to put the blood on the doorposts. Wow. God's doing something. I know that I just read on the news that they said this was the worst uh, week ever, I think, or day ever or whatever. But I'm going to say through Christ it can be the best because the blood is being applied. The declaration of the church is coming. And I believe we're going to see a turn, not a trending turn, not a plateaued thing, but a turn because supernatural move of God. The Lord is going to get the glory on this. This is just my feelings. I believe it. I receive it. This is the Passover week. Death came in. The plague was there. And because of the blood being applied, the, the death had to pass by. Are you applying the blood over your family? Oh, yes, we are. All over the place. People are declaring the blood of Jesus. I told you last week, I said this week was going to be the week of the blood. And they're declaring the blood of Jesus all over. The power, power, wonder-working power in that precious blood of the Lamb. Huh. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a God. I want to tell you what the Lord showed me real quick. This, I think, was Monday night. And... Uh, I'm going to hit this and get right back into what I want to share with you in the teaching. But while I was praying Monday night, the Lord showed me in my heart the scripture, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and most of you have already heard this because we've got the same group, is that if my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, you know the scripture. Cry out to God and repent for our wicked ways. Turn from them. He said, I'll forgive your sins. I'll hear from heaven. I'll heal your land. That was phase one of it. There's been repentance now for two or three weeks. And then we go from there to a declaration of the blood of Jesus Christ. And, and beginning to declare the blood. This is the Passover, the blood. Then come Monday night, as I was praying, I, I saw you, men and women, standing in their homes, putting on the armor. It was the armor of God. If you know what it is, there's a helmet of salvation. There's a... A uh, breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit. There is the uh, shield of faith. Uh, there is the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It's full armor of that day. And I saw men and women putting on the armor of God. And normally, the church puts on the armor of God with the mindset this is for protection. And when I saw that in my spirit, I said, God is. That's not for protection. It doesn't look like they're putting the armor on for protection. They're putting the armor on to go to war. And I said, my Lord, you're calling the church to go to war in their prayer lives. And he spoke to me. He said, because the church has repented, because the church has turned from their wicked ways, because the church has called on my blood and been cleansed, I was sharing with someone this morning, do you understand that you can't be cleansed by the blood of Jesus even in salvation? Your salvation doesn't work. You can't be cleansed in the blood unless there's repentance. And in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, he says, repent or turn from your wicked ways. And then we apply the blood of Jesus. And guess what happens after the blood of Jesus? And that's where we're at right now. So you have the repentance, you have the blood, and then you have the declaration. Meaning that you have the right now because we're in right standing with God. And God told me there are, uh, uh, what's the word, platoons or groups of men and women, first responders that have responded quickly to get on our face, quickly to repent. All over the world right now, people have quickly repented and crying out for God to forgive us and heal our land. All over the world right now, those same people and others are declaring the blood of Jesus. And I saw a military army of God's people putting on his armor. And he said, now command this virus to stop. So I'm challenging you right now, command this virus to shut down. 
Command it in Jesus' name. If you've put yourself in that position to repent, if you've turned from your wicked ways, if you cried out for the nation, if you're declaring the blood, you are positioned now to be able to command the virus to stop in Jesus' name. So right now, would you do that with me? In Jesus' name, we command this virus to shut down. We'll pray it at night. We'll pray it at noon. We'll pray it in the evening. We'll pray it at daytime. We command this virus, the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, cuts you at the very root. We curse the root. We command you to stop in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So I kind of caught you up on everything. And the thing about the youth I think was so cool, if you haven't heard what I said, if you just got on, during the youth worship last night was the very moment, if you went back in time according to the Jewish calendar, the date they celebrate it, while the youth were worshiping about the line of the tribe of Judah, that would be the time that they were putting blood on the doorposts starting the Passover. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I want to go in my Bible with you to the book, back to the book of Luke chapter 21, and we spoke about this just the other day. And I'm going to rehearse some of it and then get into something a little bit new on it. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Just kind of reading. Okay. So in Matthew 21, verse 8 to 16, I'm not going to go there, but we have the triumphal entry. And this week I want to talk about Jesus. So we have the triumphal entry. And when they begin to sing Hosanna in the highest, you know, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Listen to me close. They were speaking Hosanna means Savior or save us. And basically they're saying save us from the Romans. Save us from the issues we have. Save us from the battles we're going through. But God was saying he's coming to save you from your sins. He's the Savior of the world. That was the, the beginning of. So he comes in and they're still looking on the natural and God is saying, look on the spiritual. I want to save you from the inside. Then secondly, what happened after he came in, after the entrance of Christ saying, here I am, I'm ready to save you. He went straight to the temple. This is before the crucifixion now. This is the journey. The first part of this week on Sunday, this past Sunday, is the triumphal entry. And when he came into the city of Jerusalem, he went straight to the temple and he drove out the money changers. And I spoke how that he is cleaning the church out, getting us where we belong. Thank you, God. Positioning us so we can cry out to him, so that we can petition heaven, so that we can have the power and authority. And then I said, listen closely. Once the temple was cleaned out, you can read this. In uh, Matthew 21, starting with verse 8, once the temple was cleaned out is when the sick were able to come in to the temple and get healed. How many know that we haven't seen the move of God inside the church building the way it needs to be? Jesus went in the church building and drove everything that was ungodly out. And once the ungodly was removed, the sick could come and get their healing. That's very powerful to me. The main thing I want to share with you this morning, I believe God has done a complete reset on our nation, on the church, all over the place. You've heard me say this over and over. I believe that the church has been removed from the building so the church can do a self-cleansing. So the church, you, me, can look on the inside and say, God, Whatever's in me that doesn't need to be, let's get rid of it. There's been a season of repenting and a season of crying out. There's been the season of receiving Christ to come in and be the King and the Lord. And there's been a season of the temple, our temple, being cleaned out. I know you know that and I know that because I've been going through it and I know you have. Lord, search my heart, O oh God. And once it's cleaned out... It repositions us where the miracles of God can begin to flow. I'm expecting when we come back to the house of God for there to be more miracles. I'm declaring revival or whatever you want to label it. Come on God and move in the house and set people free. 
God is so good. Billy, we love you. We'll see you. She has to go. But I want to go now to um, verse 17, chapter 21. Listen, he leaves the temple, the tabernacle. He heals the sick. It's cleaned out. He had the entrance without them knowing it. They're declaring who he is. He is the Savior. And then from there, he leaves the building. Listen. He left them and he went out of the city of Bethany and he lodged there. Verse 17. Now in the morning, he returned into the city, but he was hungry. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it. This is the chronological order of the week of the Passion of Christ. This is the chronological order. It started with the triumphal entry. It, it came to the cleansing of the temple. And then he came to the fig tree. And we'll go to the rest later on. But he saw this fig tree away off and he came to it and he found nothing thereon but leaves only. And he said to it, let no fruit grow on you from henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when his disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? This is quite a thing. I believe, please forgive me, but I believe in the church there have been many times there are game players. Game players are those that come in, they'll they'll go through the process of religion. And I'm talking about the church worldwide. They'll call themselves Christians, but there's nothing in their heart that's Christians. This season of an unseen enemy that's bringing fear, anxiety, and a level of persecution to humanity has caused many to get real with God. Many are getting real with God. Many have known there's things in my life that I've been holding on to and God is saying, now I'm drawing the line in the sand. I believe this is the season and there'll always be, please forgive me, those that might be what we would label or call a hypocrite. They say one thing and do another. But God's drawing the line. He's saying, I'm calling you to be committed to my heart, to know me, to be personally intertwined with me. And this might not seem like such a great encouraging word, but it is because when you, when you lay things down for him, he builds you up. The things in our life that shouldn't be, they seem to block us. The hidden sins of the heart, the hidden deep-rooted angers or rejections or rebellions or whatever it may be, it sits way down deep and God is saying, I want to clean all this out. Do you know why he cursed the fig tree? It's an interesting story. He's hungry in that morning and he walks over to the fig tree and the fig tree, we could get really spiritual because it always represents Israel, but I'm not going there. The fig tree had leaves on it. They were looking at a distance and they could see the large leaves on the fig tree. When the fig tree showed those leaves, it was a sign to the person that saw it, that tree must be bearing fruit. You see, there's a lot of Christians that have a lot of leaves that look like Christianity. But God's not interested in what looks like Christianity. He's looking at and interested in what is Christianity or what is the fruit of our lives. We'll go to church and act one way and come home and act another way. He said, I don't want that. I want you to be real all the time. I'm not talking about being spiritual, walking around with your hands raised. And, you know, there's a few of us that might do that. And you know, that's, that's what people do. I'm just talking about being real with God in the deepest part of your soul. You see, the Lord said, see that tree over there? It's bearing fruit in this season because I see the leaves. The leaves are telling me there's fruit on it. 
And when he got to it, he looked for the fruit and said, this tree is showing all the signs on the outward that it has fruit, but there's nothing to eat on it. God wants you to be the fig tree. He wants me to be the fig tree. He wants us to be the one that others can come to and eat of the fruit of our life. This is that season. This is that time. Do you know I heard a thing said the other day that statistically or medically they're trying to compare. They said for a person to lose social interaction, that means phone calls, connections, FaceTime, Facebook, for a person to lose all that, is as deadly to them as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. It's amazing. I didn't make that up. That's what they said. That the lack of social interaction causes people to be in dire straits and pains. Do you know that suicides increased 400%, I believe? I think in Mississippi. In this season and time. People are afraid, people are wounded, people are anxious, people don't know what to do. And we have to do our part. And so what I'm challenging us to do is to be the church, to be the leaves on the fig tree, and to let people pick of the fruit in our lives. Well, what is that fruit? That's the fruit of the Spirit. It's the fruit of his peace, the fruit of an encouraging word, the fruit of, hey, I love you. We've had a lot of interactions. You know that we've looked at the comments on Sundays and some of these other prayer meetings. And I don't know about you, but I've looked at some of the comments on Facebook over the years. And you might get 10, 15, 20 comments. We've been running 400 plus. What does that tell you? That tells you that you guys are talking to each other. You're saying good morning. You're saying, hey, I love you. You're saying, I'm praying for you. You're, th this, this connection is very strong. But can I encourage you? There are others outside this realm that need the fruit of your life. They need us. One thing I have found that when I minister to someone, it strengthens me. It may just be a phone call from you. It may be that you take some groceries or something and leave them on the door step and then call them and say, hey, I brought groceries by. Maybe it's toilet paper. You're going to drop some toilet paper off their house. Maybe it's just going to drive by and call them and just wave at them. You know, I saw a man 90 years old. I hope you saw it. I cried, man. It was just touched my heart. 90 years old, sitting on a chair, and all of his family drove past him with signs on their cars. Happy birthday, Paul Paul, and waving at him. I said, wow. I just saw a few minutes ago a young lady. Um, I think there's like 2 million views in a nursing home. I shared it. You can look under my page. I just shared it. Just a young lady walking around with a guitar singing to the old people. The old hymns, Amazing Grace and I'll Fly Away. And you could see them light up. I mean, my Lord. And I wrote on there, that's the heart of God. It is the heart of God when we reach out to people. Didn't he say this, that uh, greater love is no man than this, and a man laid down his life for his friends? Didn't he say this, that here's all the law and the prophets hinge on these two commands. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. We need each other. We truly need each other. My mother told me she had visitors this week. I think my sister's on here. They drove by the house and called her. They couldn't come in because of this situation, but they waved. Boy, she loved it. Others visit people. Do whatever you got to do. Make phone calls. One thing about this Facebook thing 
is most everyone is on messenger. You can message somebody all day long. Just say, hey, I'm praying for you. I love you. You can messenger them and say, hey, is there something I can pray for you about? We need each other now more than ever before. And when we reach out to each other, guess what's going to happen? When the church comes back together, we're going to reach out to the world. The church is not going to be the same after this. You're not going to be the same after this because you're going to have tapped into the heart of God. You're going to have positioned yourself to say, Lord, draw me closer. I don't know how many has been saying that, but I've been saying it. Oh God, I want to be so close. I prayed this morning. I said, God, I want to be so close to you that I hear your voice in your heart. That's what God wants to do with us. God loves you. We need each other. We really do. Can I say this too? Is, you know, Sister Tammy's working. We're in the office actually right now. And um, she's working. And you don't really know fully because you're not in this position. The blessings it is that when people stop by and just bring an offering. I mean, this People come by, someone came by yesterday with an offering, says, I sanitized the money, don't worry about it. And it, it, it just lifts our spirit up so strong. I'm not saying that for you to come bring something by. I'm trying to read the notes, that's why I'm moving forward. What I'm saying is that it encourages us, the interaction. And, and, uh, just as a reminder, throwing this in, just to remind people, let them know that we started out with the app called Givelify, and you can download it. It's an awesome way to give money to the church. We researched it, it was the number one giving way, um, and it took us 10 days to get the first uh, draw from it. But they sent us a, a notice, and when you give now into Givelify, the money comes into the church account the very next day. So thank you, Lord. They got all the kinks out. So if you if you want to give online, you can give online through Givelify, and the very next day it comes into our account. But thank you for your giving. And I want to say this. Yeah, we need the money, but it's the interaction that blesses us. We just sit here and smile, and we'll say, hey, this one gave, or that one gave, or we heard from this one, or this one came by. You see, when we touch each other, I want everyone on there, Tony Blackwell. Everyone just say something to Tony real quick. Just throw him a, hi, man, good to see you. Those things just really mean so much. Sister Tammy, do we have the, a bulletin in here anywhere? You have one? I want to read the birthdays real quick. And I'm going to wrap this up. I know I've been rambling on. Um, but this is, was on the bulletin. And I'm sure there'll be some more. So we say happy birthday to Piper Boudreaux, to Evie Henley, to Maddie. How do you say her last name? Christian Hooter. Christian I've never been able to pronounce her last name. Christine. For Kristen Luba, for Hunter Duncan, for Robert Myers, for... Megan Hendrick for Brody Hardy for Russell Frierson and some others. I'm sure we don't have you on here, but we say happy birthday. <laughs> we love you so much. You Stay in contact and listen to each other's hearts. Call somebody. This is the season that is needed so bad for us to, to encourage each other. Don't be that tree that shows the world, hey, I've got fruit on me, come and pick it. And when the world says, I need what you have, that there's nothing on there. Be the tree that says, hey, come, I have some fruit for you to take. And it'll touch you. See, that's, see I'm seeing Tony said, hi, guys. And Ruth Power says, hey, Tony. Susie Frierson, thank you from Russell. Jeremy saying, hello, daughter. Jim Rice said, I'm enjoying the comments. This is interaction, guys. And when we leave today, please remember, go online or 
Make some phone calls. Just let people hear your heart and your voice. Encourage them. It is a good thing. Oh, well, I'm going to have to go. I'm just watching everybody comment for a minute. I'm going to let you continue on. We love you. I hope this touched your heart. Uh, Nikki said, pick me, Jesus, love it. <laughs> hey, Sister Tammy, love you and Pastor from Susie Frierson. Thank you, Jesus. We love all you guys. We so do miss you. Tune in tonight at 7. We're having worship. And I think Isabella is going to come also and uh, help us. And uh, hey, baby. Uh, Ashton saying hi. I can call you, baby, though, if you want. It's all right. I love all of you guys. Um, hey, Mary Gilmore, Ruth Powers. Just kind of reading through this. Joy saying she loves you, Tammy. Joy, hallelujah. Sage, love everyone. Everyone's loving everybody on here right now. It's an awesome thing. Would you contact each other? I hope this encouraged you a little today. God's cleaning the church. I'm excited. Our first service back, I think we're probably going to have about 20 minutes of just hugging and shaking hands and talking. So come on, get ready when it's time. I believe it won't be long. Love you guys. God bless. See you tonight at 7 o'clock. Bye-bye.